In today's video, we are going to discuss about anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is an acute severe life-threatening hypersensitivity reaction which occurs minutes or few hours after exposure to a provoking agent. It's characterized by a rapid and massive release of histamine and other immune mediators. And it occurs when you're exposed to an allergen like food, medication and insect stings. But any substance that is capable of inducing a systemic degranulation of mast cells and basophils can cause anaphylaxis. If the patient is exercising and has fever, emotional stress and premenstrual status and also using alcohol concomitantly, they will have an increased likelihood of developing anaphylaxis. There are three recognized patterns of anaphylaxis. Uniphasic anaphylaxis, protracted anaphylaxis and biphasic anaphylaxis. In uniphasic anaphylaxis, it's the most common type and it usually peaks within 30 minutes to 1 hour after the onset of symptoms. It resolves spontaneously without treatment within the next 30 minutes to 1 hour. But in protracted anaphylaxis, it lasts hours to days without the complete resolution of the symptoms and it's quite uncommon. Biphasic anaphylaxis is when there's a recurrence of features within 1 to 72 hours after the initial symptoms have resulted, even without the exposure to the tray. This usually occurs within 8 to 10 hours of the initial phase. The most common allergens are food substances like peanut and shellfish, drugs like penicillin, contrast and anesthetics and other substances like latex, venom and bee stings. When there is a re-exposure to a specific antigen, the basophils and mast cells degranulate to release a number of chemical mediators. For example, histamine, tryptase, carboxypeptidase, leukotrienes and platelet activating factors. All of this process is mediated by cross-linking of IgE and that's why anaphylaxis is called a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Following the chemical mediator release, there will be an increase in vascular permeability and vasodilation. This leads to hypoperfusion of the tissues. The body will respond to these changes by increasing the heart rate and cardiac contraction. Leukotrienes and platelet activating factors will act as bronchoconstrictors. To summarize the clinical features, I will be dividing this into three parts that is, skin and mucosal tissue, respiratory compromise, and reduced blood pressure and associated symptoms. So, when we are talking about skin and mucosal tissue, these patients can have generalized urticaria, itching, flushing, angioedema, and pharyngeal edema. When it comes to the respiratory system, they can have nasal itching, congestion, rhinorrhea, sneezing, dyspnea, wheezing, strider and hypoxemia. Because of the reduction of blood pressure, these patients will present with syncope, collapse or cardiac arrest. Diagnosis is based on the characteristic findings from history and examination. So number one would be sudden or rapid onset of symptoms. Number two is life-threatening problems with airway, breathing and circulation. Number three, skin or mucosal changes. If all three of these criteria are present, we can tell that this patient is having anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is a medical emergency. So prompt assessment and treatment is essential to reduce mortality and morbidity. The management plan is divided into non-pharmacological and pharmacological management. In the acute non-pharmacological management, we admit the patient to the acute side bed and assess ABC, that is airway, breathing and circulation, and perform CPR in case of a cardiac arrest. If the patients are in respiratory distress, supplement oxygen. And if there's a respiratory obstruction, intubate the patient. While doing all that, Remove if the triggering allergen is present and raise the legs to improve circulation. Secure an IV access as the peripheries can shut down if this patient goes into shock or hypertension. Monitor the vitals that is blood pressure, respiratory rate, pulse rate and saturation. 
in the pharmacological management the first line drug is intramuscular adrenaline the dose is 0.5 mg 1 in 1000 given to the mid anterolateral thigh and it is repeated every 5 minutes if needed that's the first line the second line medications are antihistamines glucocorticoids and beta 2 agonists intravenous chlorpheniramine and intravenous hydrocortisone is given to these patients if the patient is having wheezing cough and breathlessness a selective beta 2 agonist like salbutamol is given via nebulization fluid resuscitation is done in all patients a rapid infusion of 500 milliliters 0.9 normal saline or hardness solution which is given intravenously over 15 minutes we can give it up to 2 liters this rate should be titrated against the blood pressure, heart rate and urine output. And monitor this patient for volume overload. And if the patient is still hypotensive and unstable, quickly consider ICU admission. And that's all about anaphylaxis. I hope you guys learned something today. And if you did, please hit the like button and comment your ideas. And subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video.